Welcome to the Heels on Water podcast. This is where we learn to walk on the water in our storms with the courage, confidence, and grace we were designed with. I'm your host, Dr. Olette Stevens, and I am glad that you found our boat. So let's put on our heels and get ready to step out on that water. When I first became a wife, I really had no idea how to do it. I know seasoned wives would tell every young woman that she does not know how to do it until she's there. But I really didn't know how to do it. I had no realistic idea what it looked like or what it should look like. I had no firsthand examples of successful, stable, loving marriages in my life. All the women in my world were either single mothers, widows, or women in marriages that were not totally healthy. The closest models of successful marriages that I had seen on a regular basis were on television. So the good models I had in my head were Claire Huxtable from The Cosby Show, Carolyn Ingalls from Little House on the Prairie, and Olivia Walton from The Waltons. I know I really, really just dated myself there, but go with me. While I knew they were fictitious, they were the closest models I had, so they set my bar of a good wife. I knew I could never be them or have their lives. I had a real life. No luxury of a script of happy endings at the end of each episode. No happily ever afters for all the problems tied up in nice little bows. However, because I didn't know who I was as a wife, and hadn't seen it represented, I tried to replicate them and set myself up for failure with unrealistic expectations for myself. My pastor says, when you know who you are, you know what to do. That is really true. Because I did not know who I was as a wife, I did not know what to do, and I had no one to tell me or guide me. Therefore, I used the examples that were available and were indirectly taught to me. I certainly learned that representation matters, just like mentorship matters, just like discipleship matters. People have asked me why it matters if anyone speaks about courage, strength, dignity, and especially water walking from a woman's perspective. Isn't it the same for everyone? See, here's the thing. When anything is talked about or taught, a woman's lens needs to be put on it for women to fully relate to it. We do have great imaginations, but the lens makes a huge difference. Otherwise, the discussion does not include us. It's simply for us or at us, but not about us. Men can reference the women's experience, but will not understand the women's point of view about doing anything. It's common knowledge that men and women think differently. When is the last time you and a male companion or colleague independently came up with the same way to reach a goal? Was it ever? That's partially because we see things differently and experience them differently. The male viewpoint cannot fathom what the view looks like from behind a woman's eyes. Men can imagine, they can sympathize, and they can romanticize, but they cannot identify. When women are taught to step out only with the lens of a male perspective, our female identity is stripped and the female way to get to the same goal is eliminated. So the benefit of another point of view is missing. In the image of God, he created them, both male and female. That's written in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Two perspectives have existed from the beginning by design. That says to me that God intended for two viewpoints, two perspectives to exist and be brought to the table. As women, we spend a lot of time trying to find ourselves spiritually because we were not taught about ourselves biblically. Generally, 
Bible women are taught as the one-off of the male experience, and it's still the same today. When lessons are discussed about Bible women, they're usually split into two camps, a real dichotomy. The biblical women heroes, like the virtuous woman, Mary, the mother of Christ, Deborah, and Esther. And then they're the bad girls, like Eve, Jezebel, and Delilah. We're not usually taught about anyone we can or should identify with and practically learn from for our day-to-day lives. I'll let you in on a secret. Come close. There's nothing new under the sun. Okay, that's not really a secret. It is written in the book of Ecclesiastes, published just a few years ago. Okay, for real though, I was encouraged many years ago by that same verse. There's nothing new under the sun. Since there's nothing new, that means other women have experienced anything I have or will experience. That said to me that I could find models of women in the Bible that have gone through what I am going through, even if I didn't have anyone in my immediate world who I could learn from. That's why on this podcast, we will not only talk about present day experiences, lessons, and wisdom, but also look at and listen to the experiences of our big sisters from the Bible days, the examples, and what I call the non-examples. Those are the models not to emulate. Do you remember when you were a girl and you were asked what you wanted to be when you grew up? If you were anything like me, your answer reflected what you had seen someone else do or be that you thought you could do too. You got the idea to do it or become it because you saw it was possible. It's also well known that when we see ourselves represented, we get inspired to move forward. We gain confidence And we are more likely to activate the courage to try things we have not tried previously. When Sandra Day O'Connor became the first female Supreme Court justice, many girls and women were inspired to become not only attorneys and judges, but now they had seen a woman rise to the highest court in the United States. Now a new level was shown to be possible that they may not have even thought about before because they didn't see anyone there. When storms form, typically, we are triggered to respond with fight or flight. Which one we choose depends upon our confidence level in relation to that storm at that point in time. Our confidence is connected to who we see ourselves to be and the capacity that identity affords us. The more confident we are, the more courageous we are and the better decisions we make. Insecurity is activated when a person does not know his or her identity. That person remains bound by ignorance and fear and totally at the will of the stormy situation. My pastor says, when you know who you are, you know what to do. When Christian women see role models who look like they do and know their own divine identity, Those women are empowered and emboldened to be the warrior princesses they were created and authorized to be, instead of the soft Sunday morning churchgoers who are victims of the enemy the other six and a half days of the week. The first instruction God gave man and woman was to be fruitful and multiply. The second instruction was to fill the earth and govern it. Our job description was to replicate ourselves and to reign over everything on earth. God knew what was going to happen. That's why he gave us our job description and authority up front. Because Eve didn't have a mentor, you know, she had instructions, but not a mentor because she was the first woman. She and Adam, well, you know the story. So like it or not, you will go through storms in your life. And I'm not just referring to the weather systems. In your life, you're either in a storm right now, 
coming out of a storm or heading into a storm. That only means that you are living life and on the right course and that God is waiting for you to trust that he can guide you through your storms. If you try to go through the storms like the guys do it, you may get lost or just take a little longer while you're trying to make it fit. If you go through the storms of life without a guide to lead you, without God, you are destined to get shipwrecked or be drawn to the rocks by the siren's song. I'm here to welcome you aboard the boat each week. We will learn about building our faith so we can walk on water in any storm without sinking or hitting the rocks. We'll walk with the strength, dignity, courage, and grace we were especially created to carry while being full of faith and focused on Jesus. He knows exactly where we are and how to get us through the storms. I'm looking forward to being out here on the water with you. So follow the Heels on Water podcast so you know when the next episode leaves the dock and share the podcast with a woman you care about. Heels on, eyes up. Talk to you next Tuesday.